Okay, so far we've looked at the basic structure of a sentence, uh, the very core of it, the subject and verb, and we've also looked a little bit at how to attach some modifiers, adjectives, adverbs, pre prepositional phrases. Now we want to look at something that's a little more uh, complete, where we have a sentence that has a direct object, which is to say the verb is being done to something or is acting upon something. So I may have a sentence like this. They made a great many wise regulations So, once again, we want to look at this sentence, and we start by finding the core of it, our subject and our verb. And what we see is our subject is they, and our verb is made. So then we're left with the question, what are we going to do with the rest of this? These aren't modifiers. These are things that are being done to. The verb is being done to the regulations. And what we have here then is a direct object. And the way we show that, it does go on the main core of the sentence line. You separate it with a vertical line that stops at the horizontal line. It doesn't extend below. So this is how we indicate after the verb we have a direct object. And in this, this case, it's regulations. And then, as we look at the rest of this sentence, we realize we have modifiers that are modifying <coughs> the word regulations. So we have A. We have many and then you ask yourselves didn't I just skip great uh, I did for a reason great <coughs> is describing many great is an adverb and remember adverbs are very sneaky and slippery so instead of great referring to regulations it's a great many meaning um, what sort of uh, to what extent of many. So that means we have a line extending off of many to describe great. And then finally we have the word wise. And if we look at the word wise, we recognize again it modifies regulations. So that's what you're doing when you have a direct object. It goes into the main sentence line. Um, it's just not as important as the subject and verb. Uh, it counts as part of the predicate, which is part of why this line doesn't go all the way through the, the horizontal line. Now, in addition to having direct objects, sometimes you'll have what's called an indirect object, where the direct object is being given to somebody or uh, is being done on behalf of somebody. So I may have a sentence like this. Someone gave me a nasty cold. So we want to uh, piece this one uh, apart once again. We start with our main sentence line. And so we have our subject is someone. And we have our verb. The action that's going on is gave. We have a direct object, which is the nasty cold. So we sort the direct object. Direct object is being directly acted upon. In this case, it's being given. And so 
we have cold as our direct object, and we have a couple of adjectives that describe it, which is a and nasty. And then we have this little bit here, this uh, indirect object, me, where the person is not directly touching me, but the person has given this cold to me. And that's the key. If you hear that word, to, indirect objects are really just prepositional phrases, but sometimes the preposition is missing. So in this case, We have an implied to. The to isn't in the sentence, but it's implied. And then me as the object. So that one doesn't show up in the sentence, so we put it in parentheses. Uh, indirect objects often will take the form of either an implied to or an implied for. As in, make me a sandwich means make for me a sandwich. So, and you'll notice also, it does generally attach to the main verb of the sentence. So those are direct and indirect objects.